it's going. All right. I am live on the uh, Apex Entourage group. Are you live, Brian? Right. I am live. We are live All right. here now. We're over here now. Okay. All right. Kick it off. It's Let's time to go. go. Let's go. All right. We are back after a little hiatus. We had a Facebook meltdown, and then we had a... A holiday in the mix so uh but we said we're going to come back hard and we're coming back strong and we have an amazing guest on tonight with our they don't get much get stronger or harder do they brian <laughs> yeah I mean, that's just listen bring uh, out the biggest gun we could find that's it that's it <laughs> so uh special guest stacy rasky tonight um we've uh we had a conversation during a week and uh on her podcast and i said uh we gotta uh, we gotta return the favor you gotta come on with us and uh come have some some laughs with us tonight, and uh, get some fire and give some fire, as we say. So welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate. I am the fifty cal, <laughs> <laughs> the fifty caliber machine gun, which was, uh, by the way, my favorite nice. weapon to fire when I was in the army. Uh, so yeah, I have a little bit of an inappropriate story to share with that. If we want to get into that later, we like inappropriateness. We Inappropriate's we, good. <laughs> we do. Before we get into it, though, we should probably tell everybody that um, we've got Stacy on here to uh, to benefit all of us. So if you've got any questions uh, or comments, just throw them up in the uh, in the comment section here. I'll read them out as we go. Uh, the guys can't see them, but I can. So uh, that's it. I'll hand it back to uh, to Brian and Stacy. But uh, Linda's online already. Linda says hi, guys, and this is perfect hi. timing. So shout out to Linda. But uh, yeah, carry on. Sorry cutting across your all right so um so let's tell everyone what you're about you got a you got a, a big uh a big to do about you a little army in the background we appreciate your service that's uh pretty different you can't just introduce her like that like she's like <laughs> a podcaster she's like an author she's a listen we're building I mean, it up you've got to, she, we are gonna get like a better introduction than that Brian. <laughs> like, tell us about yourself she, she does everything <laughs> but uh i just think it's uh fascinating i, I i'm a big fan of uh we're on forces um so i appreciate your service that's uh first and foremost um you guys don't get enough recognition for your sacrifices. I got a couple of friends in the military, and I just don't know how you guys do it. So I appreciate you. But um, yeah, so so Stacy uh, does a everything: podcasts and books, and general just badassery. And uh, you know, uh, um, I don't know. Let's explain what you get. What you're about. Just explain <laughs> what you're don't, about. Just okay, don't mention it. Can, don't can mention we it. just can we like, just laugh for a second? At how you're both like. At a loss for words. Totally at a loss for words. <laughs> Don't mention a TV show. I mean, she's got a TV show, too. Don't mention that, Brian. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's that, See? too. Exactly. You, forgot about, you forgot about your TV show as well. TV show. She forgot to. Yeah. You, it's, it's a lot. I was going to say, I mean, I can do the intro if you want. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Do it. Let's, let's, let's go, get let's it. Go. No, no, it's funny. It's funny. No, you're right. It's funny. I don't even put the TV show in there. I'm just like, oh, yeah. You know, I just did a thing. Like film and tv show but uh yeah i'm best-selling author speaker podcast host iraq war veteran badass biker chick leadership mentor success coach authenticity alchemist uh i lovingly say i help alpha leaders shift from intimidating to influential or in my world influential which is elevating revolutionary leaders to shatter the or empowering revolutionary leaders to shatter the invisible ceiling to effortlessly elevate lifestyle leadership and legacy while enjoying the ride <laughs> gotta enjoy the ride yeah. while enjoying the ride that was that was really well memorized that was that was Thank very you. very good i enjoyed that you know yeah. everybody's got to have their hot hook right and it took me seven <laughs> years to <laughs> dial in my, my elevator pitch so i am open to feedback it is flexible so <laughs> love it love it love it i forgot you got your own app too if you go to the app store, you can get your app. You're r you are right. The yeah. influential app. So you yes. have my podcast in your pocket. That's it. Like that. <laughs> I know. I can hook you up. I know the pod or the uh, app people to hook you up. So you can I like you. You make me feel like an underachiever. <laughs> yeah, totally. Looks <laughs> <laughs> like such a slider. I know. God. What you know, just like launching businesses and making epic shit happen. Little stuff like Why that. Not? Yeah, it's just average stuff. So since we opened up with the fifty cal, yes, let's I go have, there. Let's. Talk. I have to. I have to say, this is not a 
a I'm rarely on a platform where I can actually share this story because it's really funny. It's really I all right. I don't want to I don't want to like overhype it up because, you know, it might not be that funny to somebody else. So needless to say, we were one of the last rotations through basic training that had the opportunity to actually go to the range and fire the 50 caliber machine gun. And that's it's it's a big ass fucking machine gun. (laughs) The bullets are ginormous. Um, I mean, literally, it is like almost like those sports steering wheels that they have in some of those like high performance, you know, like Formula One cars or something just to to move it. It's crazy. So needless to say, you have a full band that you're allowed to shoot and you're firing those things down right. And it's and you're just going across. And what's cool is you get to shoot at trucks humvees at tanks it just like you're just blowing all kinds of shit up you know it's amazing it's better than that. And, uh, <laughs> right oh my god so i was like <laughs> i was like shooting this and i was like oh my god if i was a dude i would be so hard right now this is so fucking awesome <laughs> i was like this is the shit like i mean literally ladywood moment right there it was awesome <laughs> That's great. There you go. I don't. Yeah. So I'm just going to write. That, no, that, that, that's entering my vernacular now. I'm going to write that yeah. down. <laughs> Ladywood. Ladywood. <laughs> Make a note. We'll set that on the. Uh, I later. would be. Yes. I yeah. would be so hard right now. So, <laughs> oh, God. No, I mean, you just had to be there. But, like, you <sighs> get, you're, you're picking up what I'm putting down. Well, we you know, it, we've we all got it. those that's moments uh, yeah. of really just being so present. Yeah. But I mean, to bridge the gap, that's truly everything that I practice and I preach is like this embodied leadership. And it really is, you know, experiential. And if we're in this place of maintaining this physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual balance, it's a very sensory experience. We're trusting our gut and our intuition and, and our body such a big por- part of our ability to be a leader. So having moments like that and being able to really laugh about those moments. But I mean, it's such a teaching opportunity to be like, wow, I gave myself permission to be that wrapped up in the moment. I mean, we just think about like that story of orgasmic living, like really being that sensory and sensual in our living, whether it's food or talking on a stage or whatever. Enjoy the ride, we say, right? So enjoy the ride. Be, be present in the moment. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like I, I say it all the time. You know, uh, thank God it's Monday. Thank God it's Tuesday. Because when you say thank God it's Friday, that means you're giving up the whole week and sacrificing a week for, for the weekend, and you you're not living life. You're just existing to get through it. And we don't want to exist to get through it. We want to have fun every day. Exactly. Oh no, I, I say thank God it's Friday, but I think that's left over from from being in England and uh, <clears throat> growing up in the. Uh, in the, in the grind, you know, I think yeah. that's just stuck. Thank God it's Friday. Like I work every day, and yeah. um, every day work is fun. So it's never really like going to work, which is really weird. If you're not having fun, um, what's the point? That's how you especially on weekends. Yeah. I love working on weekends because nobody's bothering me. It's so mm-hmm. focused and yeah. undistracted. Yeah, definitely. Not like I spend the whole weekend doing it, but I have like I tend to do my copy and content for the week on Sunday, and it's fantastic. Yeah, like everybody's useful. doing their stuff nobody yeah. bothers you mm-hmm. it's like cool just get in the flow let it happen mm-hmm. there's no pressure there you go it's so important yeah. is to tune in you know tune in and said get in the flow that whole concept i love mm-hmm. it it's just get in the moment we, we spend so much time just existing we talk about the hamster and the wheel and just going through the motions and just every day is like groundhog day and it just you're not living life you're just existing you're not getting into that flow and then you find as we're discovering ourselves and you get into <laughs> that flow you get into the, the the good grind and you get into feeling it and it just it just happens and life just starts happening and flowing to you and it's uh it's really a cool thing when you start realizing what's going on rather than when you start living life rather than let life live you as my message the other day very much so we had such a great chat on my podcast it's, uh, and if and yours will be out soon and for those of you who didn't get a chance i interviewed or no samuel you interviewed me i haven't had you on mine yet have i I don't believe so. No. Oh, 
<laughs> well, we will That's rectify right. that very soon. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, you were you were on mine quite a while back. I think it was episode thirty odd. I can go look. Um, but uh, yes, it was uh, it was one of the most fun interviews I've done. Um, which is uh, thank you. Like we've we've had a lot of people through, and like there's there's just a couple of standouts, and and you were one of the most fun. Let me see here. I'll I'll find the uh, the actual. Hey, it was episode. pretty fun too. I feel a little left out. Yeah, uh, forty-eight. We haven't, I haven't published George yet, though. We, I can't believe like, so, well, so we, it should. Be, we created. It's coming exact, in the next week yeah. or two. Is it? Yeah. It's coming in the next week or two. I, I tend to book out like ten to twelve podcasts at a time. I'll record them like a bunch for two weeks, and then I'll have them in the stack, and I'll just I'll I'll burn through them until I get down to two or three left. So, uh, otherwise, it just it, it, it messes with my schedule. I like to I like to batch them and get them knocked out, and then oh, then they're done. And then it's more fun because then I'll listen to the conversations like two months later and i forgot what we talked about and it's great i can i can play it back so yeah, it's mm-hmm. fun. i forget in a week what i talked about mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you have I to get know, who so i talked to like, yeah so, many, so much has happened like, yeah. <laughs> lots has happened in our lives yeah <laughs> don't like, ask me something in the morning and then ask me again in the afternoon i won't remember what i told you because i'm like i'm a different person yeah i don't know so much slept since then slept since then <laughs> Why Wiley, Wiley says there's so many podcasts. There is. And, uh, that is that is true. Yeah, I struggle to listen to them all. I struggle to keep up. It seems like I've got podcasts on all the time. Uh, but between between Ryan's, uh, Mark's and Mike's and Stacy's and Jessica's, I'm like, damn, I'm, I'm gonna run out. There's just a lot to listen to. Oh, Trevor, uh, yeah. Trevor and Kale, like, and then uh, Andy Frisella, like, man. I don't think I. Uh, I don't think I watch the news anymore. I think I take everything from all my podcasts and Joe Rogan. I intentionally did it. that uh, years ago. I just decided I'm not watching the news anymore. It's garbage in, garbage out, and you watch all this crap, and you get pissed off about what's going on, and you have no control over it, and you get crazy over it, and it just puts you in a bad place. So, you know, I don't watch it. You know, I'll skim it once in a while just to kind of know what's going on, kind of. But I used to watch it. You know the news cycle and the cable news. Watch it round the clock on the radio in the background, and it's like I just can't. It just it just steals your joy. Can't let stuff steal your joy. I think we all did at one point, though. I mean, because yeah. I remember like coming in from the the yard work at six o'clock at night to watch the six o'clock news with your evening yeah. meal. It was yeah. like it was a big deal. The whole world revolved around it. You know, but I I trusted the media <laughs> when I was you know like. If it's on the BBC, it must be true. And then all of a sudden, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. So um, I like the way everything's more decentralized now. You get to pick and choose what you believe. You know? Well, and, uh, you get to pick and choose what you feed your soul. Mm. Yes. Let's you know, go. It's Let, all, let's, are we nourishing or are we, you know, toxifying ourselves? That was the uh, Bible verse we, this morning. Protect your heart. Protect your heart from all the bad stuff out there, the bad people, the bad news the bed protect it you know keep it pure and i was like wow that makes a lot of sense well in, be, in being mindful how much of that is already inside of us and that's really the work that we're doing is pulling the stuff that's you know we've been infected with out mm. you know the stories the paradigms the programs the things that are not ours never were ours to begin with and then just continue to get in the way and show up like imposter syndrome or fear yeah. or some other bullshit yeah. story we tell ourselves of why, you know, why we don't share our power, our truth, our influence, our story, our ability to serve at the highest level. That imposter syndrome is weird, man. It'll it'll mess with you. It really will. I don't. I don't feel like I'm any different of a, a much different of a person. But like, I haven't had the imposter syndrome since i started just podcasting and telling the truth um i i just get put in situations where i belong um you know i think you can you can get over your head with lies and i think that uh you could be on the wrong platform at the wrong time but like i haven't struggled with it in a long time um higher levels of integrity well it's like being around you guys like it's yeah. super intimidating. It's super intimidating the first time. Honestly, then, you know, for me, both of you were intimidating when I first met you. To me, like, like seriously, yeah, but then, like, but, but then we, we meet and we're like, we're the same people. Like, you know, but like, you have I, this. 
like this weird thing that like you know they talk about ladywood like what no that just no (laughs) that was no (laughs) no we're bad no firing the 50 caliber that term is not no it's no no we're not did we it. make sam did we make yes. sam blush You're embarrassing me yes <laughs> yes i'm embarrassed like the best late night talk show ever yeah well <laughs> then let's expand on then let's expand go on we're gonna go there let's expand on your statement from the other day oh yeah that, for the executive statement <laughs> <laughs> how does that happen <laughs> yeah since we're there okay. now okay since we're yeah, there, like, all, let's all just I, bridge that gap and jump over it. Uh, the more sex I have, the more money I make. So, okay, let's just jump in. <laughs> I just want a nap, you know. Like, but that works too. You can have a financial, um, a monetary value assigned to that type of self care. You know, it can be a nap. It could be masturbation. It could be, you know, meditation. Like it doesn't matter. <laughs> Run roll. Uh, so, uh, but I mean, legitimately. There we go. That's better. There. <laughs> <laughs> so no, you, can't, you can't see me. So good. Now. <laughs> I, I, I feel honored that I can make you blush. So it, it's the lack of heat in your house. That's what it is. So ultimately what it was is we were talking about, uh, you know, the consistency around our goals. And for me, I was going up and talking about how great we are at sabotaging when we have especially a big money goal, right? Again, a lot of us who are self-made, we come from shit. We come from nothing. We come from, you know, generational poverty, um, scarcity mindset, you know, I mean, culture, society, everything that says, you know, you're not good enough and you definitely can't do that, be that, have that, any of it. And so the fact that we're breaking out of that, you know, it's triggering all that stuff. So setting that next big giant money goal can trigger a lot of that crap to come up, you know, new level, same devil. So we've got to address the same old stories, just the next layer deeper. So I, you know, was talking about it in the context of the big money goal. And I said, you know, circumvent that by instead instead of tracking the money because the money is the roi on the back end start tracking the other things whether it's you know how you're showing up you know how many clients you're talking to during the day whatever those different things are but most importantly the metrics to track are the things you're doing to invest in you the routines the meditation the exercise what are you eating you know again the physical intimacy whatever it is the thing is assigning a monetary value to every single one of those things that makes it easier to be consistent with your self-care if you assign a monetary value. I know how much money I make when I'm consistent with my meditation. So every single time I meditate, I know I have a monetary value assigned to that task. Yeah, so that makes a lot I, of sense. Yeah, it's, it's how we mind fuck ourselves into doing it. Because I can say, oh, I am not self-caring. This is not me. This is not me allowing myself to cancel on myself. This is, oh, shit, I'm investing in my business. I'm investing in my bottom line. Every time I get my ass in the gym, every time I make sure I prep my food, every time I do the meditation. And then I said, even I, with the monetary value, I even said, every time I get laid, I know how much money I make. So I said, the more sex I have, the more money I make. And that just blew up (laughs) as I spoke, because everybody's like, especially since it was a lot of spouses there, you know, (laughs) we're just like, "Ah, that's great homework, (laughs) (laughs) you know? And then what if somebody spoke later, like I'm single and I was like, Hey, self-pleasure counts. So, (laughs) but it is, it is, it's It's, it's a feel good. You do good. You know, we ride at dawn, you know, it's uh, every morning I get up and I do my ride and. Sometimes I get out of bed and I definitely ain't feeling it. And I get on the bike and I start pedaling and I get to the water and I watch the sun come up. And that's my meditation that kind of puts my head on straight. And I jump on there, I do my message, I share some love. And then I get a bunch of people sharing love back and that charges me up a little bit more. And mm-hmm. that's part of my day now that is part of my job. Like it's, it's, it's part of me now. It's what I do. And it makes me feel good, which makes me now, I 
now I have clarity when I go out from my day rather than waking up and half asleep and, you know, trying to drink eight cups of coffee to get going. And, you know, now it's, you know, one cup of coffee. You can say hungover, mate. Hungover. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> uh, you're less hungover when you got to get up every morning and ride 10 miles. It definitely, you definitely think twice about it. And once in a while you do a stupid thing. And you're like, what was I thinking? This actually hurts, you know, but, um, <laughs> you know, so, uh, but so we do a lot less of that now. But, um, you know, it's like I said, part of that feeling good and, and puts you in that right mental state where you want to go charge, like take over, you know, let's, let's do stuff when you're feeling down and out and tired and cranky. And, you know, uh, I think for, for men, I don't know so much for women, um, uh, sex is important in our lives and if we're constantly oh, it chasing is for it, the ladies too. So it, uh, just... it's like another job, like almost, they, they just know? don't want you to know that Brian. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. uh. But you know, it's, me and Sam have our conversations. It's it's like it's another job. No, really, no, we don't. We no, don't. we don't. We don't. No, we don't. We don't ever talk about that. No. Nope. But um, when it's, but I mean, you're you're raising your vibration to begin to more closely match your goals because you're getting all juiced up on the positive energy. Yeah, it is. I mean, it's like I said. Have you trekked? Have you connected the ROS since you've been doing the We Ride at Dawn three sixty five? Uh, have you? Since measured a, since apex and basically mm-hmm. this journey it's, my business has probably doubled exactly and that's just vibe that's not doing anything mm-hmm. different other than just vibe yeah yes. it, everyone and i think this is something that is is probably understated within this community it's you know because obviously we all know we're getting together in community and we're all raising each other up you know in terms of mindset in terms of lifestyle habits relationships all the things the more that we're raising our, our vibration, our positivity level, whatever you want to call it, the more attractive we become. Mm-hmm. Attractive to the things we desire. Our goals, the money, the impact, the success, the opportunities, the clients. Attraction marketing literally by um, proximity of being around other high vibe people. Dude, it's wonderful. It's one. I mean, you know, my biggest problem now, one of my biggest problems is how do I set the next goal? Is what do I aim at next? Where do we go after this? Because, you know, I, for so long it was, you know, survival. And then it was like, ooh, you know, I can have employees. And then it was, oh, I can get a bigger office. And then it's, oh, I get a new truck. And now I'm like, well, shit, I'd be pretty good just sitting here for the rest of my career, man. I'm really comfortable. Um, but that's, yeah, I that, guess not that ain't gonna really happen. My, that's not really my no. <laughs> You're not wired not like that. You're wired like me. <laughs> but how do I come up with the next set of goals? I I wrote down everything I wanted, and I, mm. I have a lot of it. So I think that's um, where giving comes in. No, well, and it, it, it is interesting too how easy our, how often our identity gets a tied tied to the goals. Right. Yeah. You know, build the multi million dollar business, have, you know, scale and hit all the I metrics. Really, and I don't really want a multi million dollar <laughs> business. That seems like well, a yeah, lot of work, you know. It seems like yeah. I, I, <laughs> like I've got like out of all the things I want, I've got quite a lot of them. Not that I've got a lot of things. No, exactly. Of There's all the, the things I want. There. I don't know what's next. I don't know. Mm. It's it's like but like the thought of running a uh, a 50 person hundred million dollar a year company it, it doesn't appeal to me and i don't know if i should say that too loud in the uh, in the apex circles what appears to be more is is several small seven to eight figure companies mm-hmm. and then spending time with my kids and playing music and doing philanthropy and charity work rather than setting some massive financial goals i'd just rather have just just two or three or four seven to eight figure companies just all kind of with with between five and ten employees each and just kind of all in their own little in the zones and then just just go and and be with my kids and, and play music with my friends and you know but like, that's that's your get, perfection there's no judgment yes. there it's not measuring yeah. against anybody else's model of success it's yeah, I, your vision of success I, I don't know what i do with a private jet I, it would i just i really don't need one i don't go all that many places I, said, you know. I don't need a Lambo. Like, you know, it's not, I don't know. Oh, no. I'd rather, 
I don't know. No, I, no, no. Well, I'll have a Lambo. Like, just maybe. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, gotta have the Urus to take the kids. Yeah, mm-hmm. maybe but, just to but, have one. But I, like, I don't know. To me, like, I'd rather have peace and comfort, and and I'd rather help someone. I'd rather go buy someone a car and give it to them. I'd get more fun out of that. Someone, you know, someone that's struggling that can't make ends meet, and here you go. Name a buddy of mine. Anymore, you know, a buddy of mine started a charity doing that, and then um, just out of no nowhere, and he works and works and works and works. And all of a sudden, he's now the director of the charity. He doesn't do his regular job anymore. He does a charity full time. And I think they've given away, I think they're up to about 80 cars that that's they've awesome. given away. That's yeah. Awesome. Um, that's exactly what he did. That was his, his dream. And money was That's life thing. changing. It's awesome. Oh, yeah. For someone ha- who doesn't have a car or a reliable yeah. car. Yeah. But it has been for him, too. Because, um, you know, it's his mission, his message uh, get out there. And he's doing great things in the community. And um, the charity's name is OnRamp, and they they just cool. exist to give low-income people reliable transportation. And they do fundraising. And they go. They work out deals with car dealerships to buy the trades, and then with uh, with shops, uh, they have mechanics volunteer and turn in the, you know, give them a couple of hours here and there, helping with oil changes and that. It's it's a really good thing. And you know, um, he's he's worked incredibly, so incredibly hard at it. There's just a little bit of envy there because boy, I would love 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 uh non-profit that was profitable if that makes sense it yeah. paid its yeah. own bills it takes yeah. care of mm-hmm. itself he's, he's got a full-time he's got some full-time staff on there now i think i have, I have a tremendous amount of respect for him he's done a great job so what's your non-profit i want to get all right this is what's going to happen all right i'm going to craft these seven and eight figure businesses and filter the money off from them into my nonprofit, which is going to pick up foster kids that have fallen through the cracks, right? And we're going to house them. We're going to educate them the way we think. And we're going to train them to be good little positive humans that give and that know that they've got value. And then we'll teach them and we'll teach them to follow their dreams and we'll help them build their businesses. We'll help them build whatever it is that they want to do. And we begin and we found it with donations and as it grows, as, as kids graduate the program, then we can put mentors with the kids and move them into the business world, right? And then we can invest in those companies and we can use a small percentage of the profits from those companies to fund the foundation even more. Yeah. And then as kids leave the foundation, the foundation can say, right, we've got a little startup capital. We're going to mentor you and we're going to build this business with you. And then it just all self-funds. And as it self-funds and grows, we can put schools in every single market in the country and in the world, building our own curriculum of advanced, knowledgeable, positive, giving, loving entrepreneurs. So that's my plan. Um, Sounds like you've thought about it just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. So for all of you who just heard and would like to connect with Samuel Smith on giving sure. to help, you know, teach business and life skills to foster children especially the teenage, house, fo- the, uh, the yes, teenagers the, the, the ones that have fallen that, through the cracks yes yes, yes. yes. So the teenagers you know maybe yes. their younger siblings get adopted or and it's just it'll happening cost later. it'll cost about fifty thousand dollars per year per child and okay. um, the initial goal would be to take on 30 children so i've okay. got to get somewhere six to seven hundred fifty thousand dollars okay. But so that's... you'll definitely have to have staff for, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. personal stuff too. Yeah, yeah the therapy, yeah, no and life skills and all that as much as the business skills and stuff. But yeah, creating that really safe space and giving them experiences. And but wouldn't that know, just the, be like kids that qualify? You, you turn a certain age and all of a sudden you realize that like, hey, I'm, I'm going in a hole in the ground. It, it might be next year. It might be in the next 50 years. But at some point, this is going to stop. And then you're like, well, what world am I leaving for my kids? Yeah. What am I leaving for them? What am I leaving for, for their kids? What am I leaving for your kids, Brian? Exactly. You know, it's like you just start to think a little bit bigger picture. And I think personally that our education system is flawed in that it doesn't focus on a lot of real world skills and real world capabilities. And uh, the only way you can fix an education system is is either you know start a new education system or just I, I don't know the other way. And I figure that picking up the kids that need the most help would be the best way to make a solid foundation for the next generation. Yeah. So sounds like a great plan. Education. Well, if I could do that, 
<clears throat> yeah, I just I just really just want to play guitar with my friends, you know. <laughs> That's but I I figure like I've got a lot of work to do before I get to that point. So now I've spoke it into existence. Now I gotta go do it. Now, now you gotta do it. Yeah. yeah. We actually um, my friend Dylan talked to me about that about the idea of fostering an apex junior uh, for like high school kids, where we basically start them early and all the years of life that that we all lost for doing yeah. stupid things and being fat and drunk and all the other stupidness we've lost and all that time we lost. If we can get the kids before they hit that 10 year of loss of life, think about if, if you had found Apex 10 years ago, like what it would have done for you, this, this mindset, yeah, these people. That, that's a good point, but I wasn't ready for it 10 years ago. I wasn't yeah, ready for it. I was just going to say the same I wasn't thing, ready for yeah. it five years ago. <laughs> yeah. But you know, I don't know. Uh, it I, came into my life exactly when I was ready to receive that's true. Exactly. all exactly. of that's true. the experience. And yeah. I did a lot to work on my relationship with being in community months prior. Mm. Like, I mean, if you're not used to being in community and obviously add in the year, you know, 2020 and all that shit. But, you know, then obviously a lot of us who tend to be in Apex are kind of the you know, oddball, weirdo, black sheep, you know, ostracized, don't fit in anywhere kind of people. You know, it's that beautiful alpha personality that's type. We, that's yeah. We're rebels, along. we're trailblazers, we're rule break breakers, you know, cause trouble. But to be in community is, is not, it, it is a skill. You have to learn how to be in community because, and it's, possibly one of the most challenging experiences that we can subject ourselves to because it is such a powerful mirror of our own shit. And not everybody's ready to look in that mirror. Not everybody's ready to face that stuff. The thing that they get triggered by or frustrated by in other people, what irritates them so much, it's an opportunity to lean in and learn. Every time you see something magical in somebody else, right? When we're t sitting here talking about how epic each other is, we see those amazing qualities in somebody else because it's a mere reflection of the qualities we already possess. Mm -hmm. We could not see those things if we didn't. And so it's very challenging to sit in that discomfort on both the positive and negative and truly take ownership of the fact that this is just a reflection of ourselves. The medicine of what we need to work on and the magic of the shit we need to celebrate and own within ourselves. And community is uncomfortable as shit for that. And I'm grateful that I would leaned into doing that work to learn how to receive that. And that's when, poop, hey, we'd like to invite you into Apex. And we go. It's like you've got to go. It's almost like you've got to go through a certain amount of failure before you actually understand the value of what we're being taught. And like you have to go through the fire to become the anvil and all that shit. You still have to go through the fire. And I wonder if we could jump in and it, it, man, you know, you go back and talk to 30 year old Sam and be like, Hey dude, maybe don't drink that. Hey dude, maybe put that you know chicken wing down. But like, it was like, yeah, right. Whatever. I, yeah. I wouldn't have listened. No, that's true. You know? that's true. We knew better. The inner rebel was too strong. Yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't even that. It was just that, you know, I just thought I knew best. Um, and there's a there's a point in every I don't know about young ladies, but there's a point in every young man's life where he has to go and rebel against everything, and he's the one that knows best. And he's going to make his own decisions. And sometimes you get over that in a couple of years, and sometimes you never get over it at all. See, I don't think it's gender specific. I think it's more in alignment with the people who are are the this natural alpha personality type you know as yeah. i'm always talking about right it's the high sensitivity right the empathy and the high sensation seeking right the add the hd adhd the the high ambition the drive the high achiever high performer right if you have both of those we tend to be the strong rebel, the trailblazer, the rule breaker, the go at the beat of your own drum, question everything, stubborn as hell. But there's a magic in that that we have to learn, mature into. Mm, definitely. And it's definitely not gender because I'm the same way. And I would say there's a lot of people and that's why they come into things such as the Apex and they're like, oh my God, for the first time I'm in a room filled with people just like me. I don't feel like a freak. Yeah. Or it was, I took the, I've lost, I, 
lost is the wrong word. I've I've disengaged from so many friendships um, now, and I, I can pick them up. I can go back to the bar and find the same guys. Um, you know, I can go to the same places and do the same things. Talking but, about the same old shit. Yeah. Mm hmm. For I find 20 it years. Funny how some of those people now are, are coming to me going, you know, first they're like, what did you do? And now they're like, uh, like, what's this thing kind of all about? And, you know, and the people that shot an hour ago, a guy called me up. It was actually someone that Jess Dennehy met. He wants to, he's an amateur uh, video guy and he's looking for some real estate subjects to build his portfolio. And he's like, can I do some videos for you for free to practice basically and build up my portfolio? So I start talking to him and he starts telling me how he's stuck and how he's having like all the apex issues and he doesn't know how to get to the next level. And I was like, it's your lucky day. So I sent him the link to live. I said, come to Texas in a month and uh, it'll change your life. And I started telling well, him about it. He left. He was literally on fire when I got off the phone with him. He was like ready to take over the world. And I was tell like, him if he, hey, tell him if he comes to Texas, I'll give him a crash course on uh, how to sell video um, because realtors don't have any fucking money at all, mate. It's probably the worst target audience you can start a video company with. Well, Ask me how I know. Well, he, of course, you, you were the topic <laughs> of that conversation. How do you think I know, Brian? How do you think yeah, I know, Brian? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I know. Realtors don't spend any money. You know, exactly. They're using their iPhones exactly. to take pictures because they don't want to spend 100 bucks on a photographer, you know, the, the dark crooked iPhone mm. pictures with the finger in the way and standing in the mirror and was it taking the pictures all those good pictures they're fun you ever see that bad real estate pics uh, that is that that site bad real estate pics there's some funny stuff on there oh, oh yeah like the one with the red room the dungeon yeah. and all the toys were out yeah mm -hmm. uh, every, every time we do a Matterport right so Matterports scan a whole house when they when they you, you move them tripod to tripod they take six images of the room there's six cameras so each revolution is 36 images and every single Matterport that we do, we will hide in one image. And it's just a little Easter egg. We just hide and make a stupid face in one image. And like, nobody's ever said a thing. And we've shot Matterports for like so many realtors and so many builders and stuff. And we hide in just about every single one of them and nobody's caught us yet. And it's, it's just part of the fun. <laughs> but no, there's not a lot of money um, video wise. There's not a lot of money in real estate. There's a lot of other people need video more than realtors uh and to be fair it, it's very difficult to market a house in an exciting way through video um you can't get much more different results than if you just do slideshows and pictures there's there's other better ways to market houses than real estate videos unfortunately the, the 3d stuff the matterport is is where i see it's at you know someone i, I do that 3d every house and then someone calls me up and say can i see the house I say hold on i sent you the 3d all right take a look at the 3d if you like it then i'll show it to you because my time's valuable i don't want to show up there and have you tell me oh i don't like the wallpaper i don't like this and that walk through the house it's like a video game you can see the whole house if you're still interested then i'll show it to you because now i know you're really interested because it's basically just verifying what you saw on the computer saves a lot of stacy doesn't Stacy doesn't sell houses, mate. We should probably flick to something else. Yeah. That's cool. I actually, because I specialize in boundaries um, and obviously a lot of the mindset, self-mastery, self-management, I work with the real estate industry intensively. <laughs> I've spoken at so many realtor conventions, worked with so many brokers, agents, investors, lenders i mean just the industry and in, in in general just the way it's structured because it's so taught to be after hours overly available bend over mm. backwards you know sacrifice yourself struggle bus the whole shebang yeah, but um like yeah for, I get for, it. The, for the first two years you literally have to it wasn't until I was over three years in real estate and actually had enough marketplace validation and enough of a name that I could do that. Otherwise, if they want to see a house on a Sunday afternoon or short notice, you just got to drop everything and go. Yeah. Um, it's only now with, with marketplace validation. Those first few years in real estate, uh, well, as you probably know, they're, they're really quite tough. Oh, yeah. um, but there's that point right where you can't do that anymore if you want to grow if you want to scale yes you wanna, yes you know yes. you just can't be that version of yourself anymore and i mean like my my client who's a broker i mean her brokerage firm she hit her five-year goal in year two and scaled nine million over the previous year's revenue and it was her first year in the black by implementing boundaries 
no longer going out and doing any of the external stuff and focusing solely on nurturing and leading her team. But it's, it's going back to, it all ties into that caring for yourself. Yep. Like, it you was know, all the self-care. How many, how many days I've, I've come home after 12 and 15 hours and just been exhausted. And, you know, your, your productivity after about six hours gets, it starts to wane anyway. Um, I do much better now in short focus spurts uh, throughout the day and then mixing in time to go for a walk and mixing in going to the park with my boys and that kind of stuff. Um, I do, much do a midday like- meditation or nap and then go walk. It's <laughs> yeah. good. I liked 75 hard. I'd sleep that, you know, I could get one of those workouts in the afternoon and it was like, all right, you know, I get 45 minutes. Let's go take a quick hike around the neighborhood real quick. And you get, but then you come back and you're like, all right, I'm ready to go. It was kind of, uh, you had that excuse of, all right, I got to go do a workout. I don't want to do this workout tonight. Let's go knock this out now. And, but that gave you that reset, that little break to fire you back up again. Yeah, and get we, you going. we weren't created to, to go to work for 12 and 15 hour days. Like not at all. Um, you know, I think capitalism's lied to us. <laughs> but then that goes back to the school system, right? Where hey, they're indoctrinating you, you into being the sheeple that just sit all day and take instruction and deal with it. It's, it's Can't balance good. a checkbook though. Yeah. Nope. Before I or jumped, cook food. Before I jumped out here, I was on uh, the, the college near us, actually where I took the real estate class. Uh, professor, my buddy Joe Sonoma, I was on with him Sunday. He does a coffee talk. So he asked me to come speak zoom into his classroom i've done it a couple of times and as a success story I, I took the class four years ago um i'm like 95 deals in like me and my team we've done like 60 million revenue and i'm a part-time agent so to the new agents out there where 87 percent of the agents fail and never sell a house um basically i said what's your excuse <laughs> i told him i got i got some letters for you fye i says and you gotta keep that in your head i said it's traveling and uh i said you guys are gonna make excuses of why you can't do real estate and I have six kids. I work full time. I was like, and I still do it. What's your excuse? I said, so it's all about your head. It's all about your mindset. And I did a coaching session, basically on a, an apex session with the uh, people that are taking that real estate class. And um, it was actually a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun because uh, I remember sitting in four years ago going, wow, this is very overwhelming. All this information. Can I, can, and can they I don't speak teach to you that? real estate though. They don't teach you how to sell real estate. They don't teach you how to do an open house. They don't teach you how to get a listing. They don't, they teach you the laws and all that great stuff. Okay, good. We need to know how to do that. But okay, go sell real estate. What, how do you do an open house? How do you get leads? How, they don't teach you any of that. And that's why 87% fail. And that's why there's the market's so diluted with bad agents that they, they were never taught. They don't know how to do it because they were never taught because the system's broken. Am I same in Texas? Same. So- well, the, the statistic from the National Association of Realtors I've got to correct you. 87% are out of the business within the first 18 months, right? So what happens is they'll come in and they use the old churn and burn sales method with the brokers. And you're told to call your friends, call your family, call all your contacts, call your book of business, post on Facebook, get as many people as you can uh, to know that you're selling real estate. (laughs) And then just ask to trust them with the largest financial transaction that most people ever do in their lives. And like, well, what do you know about this? Oh, well, I just got my license. Well, how long have you had your license? Well, two weeks. Well, how many houses have you sold? Well, none. Well, fuck, they're never going to trust you. You see, so it's, it's not a matter of whether they want to sell real estate or not. What generally happens is these guys run out of lukewarm leads. They run out. They, they can only sell to their family, their uncle, their cousin, so many people. They run out of these leads. And if they run out of lukewarm leads or they don't have – some sort of uh, social media plan and some sort of local network, some sort of reputation already built, there's no way for them to refill that funnel and they run out of money and have to go get jobs because they're not taught the rest of the industry. But they, they last through the first four or five deals and then they don't understand how to bring in more deals and they haven't done that work with their sphere of influence. I am purely an influence marketer. That's like purely. Same That's, I don't do anything yeah. but influence I don't even run ads. Like everything I do is the oh, yeah. Yeah. It's 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 all through Everything's social media. Everything's organic. Yeah. All organic, yeah. And it, Everything's yeah, it took, organic. It, it took a long time, um, but I'm at the point now where you know I've I've got enough real estate to satisfy my real estate desires. Um, I've got other businesses that I'm I'm doing, and and the real estate's probably going to start you know tapering off a little bit because I I find more joy in other things. Um, 
but I haven't had to do any kind of advertising really since probably since before COVID. And once we started doing the podcast consistently and the Facebook lives consistently and the morning posts consistently, it just it, it's just worked wonders. Everything is organic. Well, and I think that's important is is really highlighting the the golden nuggets that you just shared for everyone, regardless of the industry that they're in, because it's the same thing that influence marketing, that attraction marketing no love and trust. <clears throat> comes from being authentically you, right? Which means it goes back to our, our earlier conversation about knowing the ROI, the monetary value of all of the self-care and the investment of time, energy, and t- attention into you, you know, the, the that's that such a hard mind, one to break. Soul. Such so, a hard one to break. We never that's talk what about that. Exactly, and mm-hmm. that's the stuff that really activates the attraction. It's, it's like a also cheat code. the stuff. It is a cheat code. It's, it's up like down, up down, left right, left right. A B A B. A B A B. Start. <laughs> start. <laughs> yeah. Woohoo! Um, but it really is the cheat code because that's what helps you be consistent. If you're consistent on the stuff for you, then you're going to be consistent on social media. You're going to be consistent in the showing up. You're going to be like, I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. I'm just going to show up and be of service. And that's the magic to attraction marketing is you don't need anything. You, there is Your cup is so full. You're sharing the overflow, and that is what's magnetic. If anybody can ever feel the need, that's the chase, that's the used car salesman energy, and you are going to lose it every time. And it's funny, if you you recap the way you described real estate and the way they're taught real estate, it sounds exactly like people who start a network marketing or direct sales business. Yeah, Yeah, because that's the the easiest people to close. They already know you. You know, that, that, that's, no love and trust. that's what we spend so much time But that's the same building. training, right? Yeah. Like, write down your list of 50 people that you know from, you right. know, Bob the mailman but, but, to but I had dog to do that. I had to do that with, with, with real estate. I had to, and I hated it. Like, hey, I know I haven't seen you since the last time that I had my dog groomed. However, did you know I'd started to sell houses? No, it sounds so disingenuous. And the the next thing that attraction marketing has done for me is that then when you finally do get somebody that says, you know what, I do want to sell my house and I do want to consider hiring someone that's only ever sold two houses, please come and talk to me. Then you've got to do a presentation and full color printing and how you're going to sell. Now, I don't have to do any of that. It's just, hey, Sam, can you sell my house? Yeah, no worries, mate. Send me the address. Let's get knocked out. Someone asked me that day, what's that's your it. listing presentation? I was like, I show up and I talk to people. Right. Yeah, they, you know, like a, they know like what they get. Portfolio can. and no, either you think I could sell your house or you don't. Like, but, like, but it's consistently, it's consistently showing up, being of service, mm-hmm. not needing the sale, not needing yeah. the clothes. Said, right, the job that's the, the thing the help, you're not yeah. chasing. You know, I literally put that on my post. What's today? Today is Monday, right? So today. <laughs> My attraction. That it. your marketing, it's like a cat. Like your dreams, your desires, all the goals are like a cat. If you chase the cat, you're never going to get it. But if you sit in that space of like, nope, I'm just focusing on me. I'm worrying about me. In fact, if I even kind of act like I don't want it, guess what happens? They come to you. Whether we're talking about the ladies for all you guys or the ladies who are looking for the guys, if you want to be in that attractive energy (laughs) or it's the sale or for like the place many of us are at our team, we need to be attractive in the people that we want to build out our team. So this attraction marketing applies all the time, all the time. But it is because you're showing up being of service. You're not saying, hey, guess what? By the way, I sell houses now. No, you get to be like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I did this or this happened or I helped so and so or you hear some overhear somebody saying something, and you just drop a little bit of knowledge being in of service in whatever industry you're in, and boom, they're gonna be like, Oh, can I have your card? That was super helpful. Yep. I just so we do. I just coached that literally an hour ago on another on this thing. Basically it's like we talk about uh, everyone gets all excited when they get the real estate license or, or network mark or whatever they do and they vomit all over everybody. And everyone's like running from the vomit. It's like, <laughs> here it comes, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I say, listen, 
don't get up there and say the whole world, hey, I'm a brand new agent. Let me sell the biggest investment of your life. Like, no, like just start adding value and align yourself with a team. Like I have a team. So I, my team leans on me. And they say, how many houses have you sold? They say, well, the team has sold this many houses and gives them some comfort that there's power in a team rather than just one person by themselves. And that's how I help my team get started. It's almost fake it till you make it, but they're not really faking it because they are part of this team, which is selling. And um, it gives them the, the authority that they need to, to, you know, to start selling themselves. And then it just, we keep bringing new people at the team and we keep growing and, you know, everyone helps everybody throughout the, the team. And it really uh, gets them over that hurdle of I'm all by myself on an island and I'm vomiting real estate all over everybody. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I have legitimately no idea how many houses I've sold. I got a spreadsheet. I, and I like some I don't even remember. I don't even remember some of them. Like I go back through old client files to make sure everybody's getting Christmas cards and stuff. I'm, I'm like, what house was this? Where was this? It just I don't know. Is that bad? <laughs> yeah. But see, that highlights too back to the what we're talking about with the power of community, right? I always say like when you're in super aligned community. One plus one equals seven in terms of the results you can generate. I mean, like truly. That. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some people are like one plus one equals three. I'm like, no, it amplifies even more when you're at this level. I mean, think about how quickly things happen for people. For example, like in Apex, you want to talk about an accelerator. It's fucking bananas. People don't believe this shit. People have been watching me. They're like, oh, my God, you're doing all this crazy. Stuff. I'm like. It's just my life, man. Like it is. You know? Like it's just, it's just normal. <laughs> I'm not yeah. doing anything special. Like it's, it's just on I'm the calendar. Allowing. It's just on the calendar. We just get to it, you know. But we allow it to happen faster because we're more inclined to trust and we're surrounded by other people who are just like us, who are really in that energy of being magnanimous and generous with their genius and are just willing to help and support. Because if you grow, I grow, we all grow together. We're all elevating together. So truly is one plus one equals seven because that's how quickly everyone in our ecosystem is accelerating. I mean, we're way past I've, that exponential growth curve. I've you know, felt it's like, it since uh, since joining entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Like on Entourage was was good, but at good it was just okay. Because Entourage was was much more of finding yourself and finding your own way. Whereas for me, entrepreneur was the first time I really connected with a group. Like, right, we're running together now. Mm. And I feel as though I jumped up to executive a couple of weeks ago. And you remember Back to the Future 3 where they got them fire logs on that thing, right? On that train. The green one goes off and that's kind of entourage. And the yellow one goes off and that's, that's a lot more exciting, um, you know. But then executive red log goes off and it's like, wow, well, shit, I better get it together because um, this is like, I, I can see what's going on in my business and it's just, it's incredible. And it's coming from the network and giving value to the network and helping people in the network. And sometimes like, you know, Ryan says, it's 10 gives for everyone receive, but the, the, the gives, they feel good anyway, yeah. you know? And like, if I do something, if, if I were to hook, you, Brian, up with Stacy. You all didn't know each other, and Stacy was buying a house with you, and you did a good job. Stacy would feel indebted to me because I helped her solve her problem. You would feel indebted to me because I bought you a client, and you would have a new relationship. And so that happens over and over and over and over within the network, and you cannot help but reap the reward from it. Like it's 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 like it's it's the law of reciprocity, yeah. but with really really cool giving humble successful people like i don't know if there's anybody in this network that's inherited their money i think every single one of us was a bit of a fuck up but we've all gone out and made it ourselves yeah, i think yeah, everybody's self-made in some way you know and it, mm -hmm. and it is interesting because i hear some of the people really downplay their stories because they do the comparison right of like oh okay you know like ryan went to jail you know <laughs> all of that stuff and you know someone like me having my rock bottom moment at the right at the end of 2014 you know people who've lost intense amounts of weight or you know recovered from addiction or you know whatever it is like it's not a comparison in that sense like we've all got our shit we've all got our shit even the most seemingly well-adjusted childhoods life still happens and embeds mm -hmm. those same limiting beliefs that get in the way and cause us to not celebrate our successes 
not, you know, be more visible in some form or fashion, there's still some shit showing up. And even all of those people were still self-made in this community. They earned, at they the, earned le- it. the levels of at, at entrepreneur and at uh, execs. I have not met anybody that isn't who they say they are. And I've not met anybody that will shit on anybody else. Like, it's not that kind. Like, like you meet successful people at the country club and you meet successful people in other walks of life. It's different, but Apex. I think that's where the imposter syndrome comes from because through the years when you deal with some of these, you know, idiots that, you know, whatever old money kind of talk down to you and, you know, like, you know, you get that imposter syndrome. So you're so used to being shit on, basically, by people that are successful that when you go into a room with people that are successful, you're waiting to get shit on and you're like, whoa, they actually like me and they want me and they mm-hmm. want to help me. And it's, it's a different feeling. It really is. Yeah. Um, and then we talk about the idea we talked about the other day. We don't give one-to-one. I don't give to you. I don't give to Stacy. I give to you and then it comes back through Stacy. It's putting it out into the universe. Like people think like, you know, when you do good for some person, that person has to do good back for you. Um, I actually heard it was a Joel Osteen thing. Be good to the people that aren't good to you, even though they're not good to you, because you're giving the good to the universe. So that person that may not deserve you to be good to them, be good to them anyway, because you giving that good to the universe is going to make it come back around in another fashion back to you. And if you think about it, it really does happen. Like, you know, you may help some complete stranger and all of a sudden they'll never help you back. But then all of a sudden something else shows up in your life like that came out of nowhere. Wow, that was pretty cool. You know, that's how it works, pal. Yeah. Hey, Stacy, smile. Let me get a picture. All right. All right. <laughs> We're about up on time, uh, guys. Do y'all have any more final thoughts before we wrap up for the evening? I don't know. We had so many, so many great things today that we talked I, about. I mean, the what? I lady mean, we've got, something? and all the, the yeah. lady would. Lady would. <laughs> lady. <laughs> More sex, more money. Is that, is that some, that's, he, just, that's a P. Diddy song, isn't it? Oh, that's more money, I'm gonna, more problems. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that down. Ladywood. Ladywood. Lady <sighs> today, I, today I learned. <laughs> Especially when firing a 50 caliber machine gun. It's okay, so amazing. any of you boys struggling to pick up girls, that's what you need to go and get, apparently. Yeah, yeah. big machine gun, yeah. All right. Well, um, I want to thank everybody for watching. I'm trying to keep these two semi-professional. I don't know. I, I think know we had some it. really good gems and gold nuggets interwoven with absolute just ridiculousness just de- you know, and so debauchery. <laughs> There was, there were teaching moments in yes. every one of those stories. Come on, lots of value. I believe so. Lots no, this was fun. <laughs> this was fun. All right, spin for the win. That's it. That's Y'all, it. if you don't follow Stacy Rask- Rasky already, why not? Go and follow her. Go check her out. At what's your Instagram? Oh, at Stacy Rasky. There you go. Super easy to find. Download the and app. Go. You get everything in one spot. Yeah. yeah Influential app. Absolutely. And for those of you coming to Apex Live, I will be there on stage, stage live entertaining you there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I will be at Apex Live. And I'll you you too, right, Ryan? Yeah, we'll all be there. So come and say hello. Yeah, yes. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. I think that's it, right? Yeah. Wait, what right. final thoughts? Final thoughts? Final thoughts? Look, everything. <laughs> Everything that you desire is on the other side of one wall, and it is the wall of control. It's We focus too much on trying to control things that are not ours to control, all the things outside of us. And the moment you flip that control to focus on you, the only thing within your control, everything you desire opens up, and you're finally able to receive. Hmm. Love I love it. it. Love it, love it. Awesomeness. All right. Well, that's it from us for this yeah. week. Uh, same time next week, Brian? Yeah, same time next week. Uh, let's see who uh, who else we can surprise everybody with next week. I don't know. We announced it, and then we got a whole list of guests. So I guess we're just going to go through and pick the next yeah. victim for, for the, the ring. We're going to roll the dice and see who shows up. All right. I'm getting out of here. You'll be good. This Thank you guys awesome. for watching. Thank you so much. And we'll uh, we'll Thank see you all next week. Bye. Have all a right. good one. Bye. Okay. The video's in it now. Hold on, hold on. Oh, you're still live? You gotta pause the live.